Hello, everybody. My name is Martin Hermann, and together with Benedict Höhne, we will show you the ready-to-use SAP software to SAP software for SAP S4 HANA Cloud. Good morning also from my side. I'm Benedict. Martin will start. I will start and briefly explain what is the session today for. So this is a big picture. <clears throat> Just to, to briefly explain, we will start with the solution order. Um, here, um, the solution order is uh, is a, a main uh, hull for for the uh, subscriptions, for contracts, for um, stock items, for all this stuff. And we will focus on subscriptions here. We will create it, and then we see all the interaction with the SAP subscription billing on the left side. And here uh, we mainly focus on the in the, on the integration on the different ways of integration. We will explain it briefly afterwards, and you will see that you as a user, you will not even realize what happens and on which system you will be. Mm -hmm. It is tightly integrated, and it is ready to use. So let's start with this one. I hand over to Benedict, and we will just start with a demo. So thank you, Martin. So as Martin said, I will show you a small business process um, where I uh, have a scenario, um, I'm representing a software provider and I want to sell my software as a service. I want to do this together with uh, other um, items such as projects, implementation project, customer success manager. So um, in this scenario, the best uh, app to use is the solution order, as Martin said, and uh, also um, integrated the subscription. In order to save time, I've already prepared a solution order that I will briefly go through with you. We have three items in it. The first item is the subscription to our software, in this case CAD software. The second item is an implementation and migration project. And the third item is a service contract re um, representing a dedicated customer success manager. We want to focus on the subscription and the integration with subscription billing. So, um, Let's see if you can spot uh, which system we are currently using. Um, we start here in the subscription item. Um, I would like to show you how a subscription is set up in regards to pricing. So we have different price items. The first item is an activation fee. The second is a recurring license fee that gets charged uh, every month. And uh, it is dependent on how many licenses there are in the contract. And the third one is an API-based charge uh, that is built by usage. We are in a B2B world and uh, tiered prices are very common. This means every new subscription, um, new license in a subscription gets priced uh, depending on how many licenses are already included. And um, I would like to give uh, our customer a better deal and use this integration tool price calculation and update our pricing table live. I can do so, update the price and um, this is now incentivizing more usage later on because we start with 100 and we get a better price for more than 100. Also, I can use a discount um, where I can enter any value or percentage. We do 10% here. And again, we see the feedback live on the screen. We see the updated prices uh, in the solution order. In the background, we had a service to service call, but everything without context change. So um, after doing these changes, I'm ready to move on and release all items. This means the orchestration will now start and follow-up documents will be created. Without going too much into the details, uh, it's better to see what we did. So I would like to go to the progress tracker, view progress. And uh, here we can see what happened. We can see the solution order created three items, a service contract, a subscription and a customer project. And they all look and behave the same. And this is also a result of the tight integration. For example, I can click on an ID and out of the solution order, I will open the subscription app, manage subscription um, directly in the same context. So uh, let's have a look at the subscription that was created. We have um, long-lasting uh, business relationship in a subscription. So we can see all kinds of terms here, like renewal terms, duration, etc. But today we want to focus on the technical aspect a little more. So I want to move on with 
uh, our processing data. Here we can see what happened. So we can see we have an order document. This is the solution order that's being referenced and we can also see a provider contract. And the provider contract uh, is representing the subscription in the accounting world. So this means uh, it's, it's needed for things like yeah, revenue accounting, for profit analysis, etc. And uh, here for um, an event was triggered when the subscription was created and the provider contract was created immediately after as well, actively decoupling the processes in an asynchronous manner to pick up if anything went wrong, it gets automatically created a little later. Um, after the technical stuff, let's also have a look at uh, the business perspective. We did some changes in the solution order and of course we would like to make sure everything is as expected. So we can have a look at the subscription item where we can see that we have customized prices for our recurring tiered price and for our discount. Everything is applied and um, this should also be reflected in the bill. So let's jump to billing documents. Um, billing doc documents in subscription billing are always automatically created whenever a subscription is active and uh, this means we can also already see some activity here and um, we have two items here uh, created. This means that we have two subscriptions being created, uh, two bills being created for this subscription. This is because we have two different billing strategies for the recurring fees that uh, will um, be built at the beginning of the period for, for better cash flow and for um, the usage part of course we need to aggregate usage over time so uh, this will be only built at the end of the billing period and we have 33 days until it is closed. So, um, we don't wait, uh, want to wait quite as long, so I close the bills manually. Um, this will trigger the follow-up processes. And after collecting these bills, the next thing we want to do and want to show is invoicing. Um, invoicing um, is, is a separate step because of we, we can now aggregate um, all of these billing data that comes together because the customer, of course, only wants to receive one invoice. So here you can see the two bills that I just closed and um, they will now be combined. And this could also be with the different item types of the solution order like the service project into one invoice that uh, was created now and is, when I click save, ready to be save, uh, sent to the customer. Again, it includes our, our different items, the license fee, API calls um, that, that happened and um, the activation fee. And um, now that the invoice was sent to the customer, I would like to go back to where we started from and this is the solution order. In the solution order, we can again have a look at this nice progress tracker that uh, visualizes uh, neatly what, what we have done and what we've just seen because I have to admit it was a little fast. So we have uh, the solution order on the left. Uh, it created the three follow-up documents, the customer project, the service contract, and the subscription. We focused on the subscription and we saw in the subscription uh, two bills were created and these two bills were combined into one invoice. And um, out of this invoice, we see that journal entries resulted and this is now the full chain end-to-end -end process that we have seen. We had many integration points. I'm curious if you've spotted all and um, you can check yourself with Martin who will explain to you which steps exactly happened and whether we've been on BTP or on S4HANA Cloud. Thanks, Benedict. Yeah, this would be an interesting um, and yeah, a very <coughs> challenge, I guess. Um, <laughs> on which system have we activated all these activities? So let's start at first with a ready-to-run integration. We start with a solution order. This is the first step. So we, uh, the first step was that we are in the solution order. We create the subscription item. This was the first uh, thing together with events and, and, and all the stock items. But we focus on subscription here. Uh, and then we created 
all these pricing activities and, and in reality all the subscription uh, is defined in subscription billing. So we do not have any logic, any, any knowledge in the solution order or in the SAP S4HANA cloud. All these things happen in the subscription billing. And for this one, we, we have a direct synchronous call from, uh, from the solution order to subscription billing to get all the latest pricing information. Uh, and uh, we don't want to have all these things already in the persistent way. Therefore, it's always a simulation call. So we call it on a simulation mode and try to get all the latest activities and use uh, and, and rate plans and all this stuff from subscription billing. When the pricing is determined, it, of course, it will be sent back, and then you see it in the solution order. This happens in real time. At this point of time, you do not realize that this is happening in subscription building. We were still on the solution order. Then Benedict pressed the release button, and the release button means, OK, now it's done. All is negotiated. Customer might be happy, and so we want to create it, and we want to um, entitle the, the subscription accordingly. And therefore, um, we need in subscription billing really to create. So at this point of time, we have the same synchronous call, but this time we really create the subscription in subscription billing. This is a screenshot accordingly. You can see, but of course, you will not remind. But uh, this is exactly the the uh, subscription billing screenshot when we created the subscription. And in the next step, when subscription billing has created the subscription, it has to inform SAP as for HANA Cloud. And it's not only a simple uh, confirm, it is really an event which is raised. And here we use the, uh, the new event broker. Um, to notify SAP as for HANA Cloud that the subscription is created for the solution order. And at first, we, we create in the solution order the subsequent information about uh, the su subscription item on the one hand. And on the other side, we create the provider contract. So we have two activities based on the event. You also see here the screenshot. This is our subscription. And here we see even this was the time when Benedict yeah, pressed and we had a jump to the subscription billing. At this point, you also see that we have here the provider contract created. And the next step, we have to create the billing plan. This was not uh, explained in detail in the demo, but this happens in between, so we have a billing forecast in subscription billing. That's what also was explained by, by Benedict, that uh, we have, it is managed automatically. And at this point of time, we use, again, the event program and say, oh, I have a new billing forecast. Please update. And then um, the data events create the billing plan. By the way, I haven't mentioned yet all these events are, um, are not notification events, but data events. So it, it is always uh, an activity happens directly in the SAP as for HANA Cloud. A APIs are called for this one. And finally, we talk about the billing. This was a, no, let's, sorry. Uh, in between, I want to explain the SAP event broker because for the last two activities, we used the SAP event broker. This is, uh, this is a new introduced for SAP, SAP integrations. So for internal cloud, Integrations you see here, for example, for success factors, uh, for field class, Ariba, and so on. And of course, also for subscription billing and SAP as for HANA Cloud. And the special thing is, it is a fully managed cloud service. This means that it is, it is uh, SAP managed. We, uh, you do not have to take care about the technical details, the technical stuff behind. This is, all these things are pre-configured, managed by SAP. And the only thing what you have to take care about is you have to check the customer managed business integration. And here we, we just use the unified customer landscape, the UCL. This is a, this is an, a screen uh, where you can activate and deactivate your events. For example, you have, a, a, you, have you as a customer, you have all these control activities, what has to be enabled and it's, a, it's like a toggle on off feature. 
It's, it's very simple, it's, it's very nice, and it makes life, of course, very easy, just as a ready to run. That's what we promise. And of course, you have, you have full flexibility, so you can add um, SAP application and tenants what you want. And now the last step, this is what I missed in between. Now we come to the billing. And the billing is, uh, is not managed by the event broker. The billing is managed by the integration flow. There are technical reasons for. And, uh, and because of this one, this is the last step. When we create the sales billing documents, we have here the, uh, the, the workload in the subscription billing. And based on this one, we transfer all the billing documents. And you see finally the invoice. Having said this, we have all the four steps of the demo. You see, we jump a lot in between. We have a lot of messages back and forth. SAP is for HANA Cloud, is special for the solution order. We have everything in one place. And of course, also for the invoicing and billing. And subscription billing is the owner of all subscriptions. When you want to have some more details, then no problem at all. Just go to the process navigator or just go to the SAP Business Accelerator Hub, and then you will find all process details and all of the details of the messages and the APIs. With this one, this is, of course, also when you make your career growth, then just choose. I would say thank you, and we are ready for questions. Thank you also from my side. Happy to go to the Q&A session and see if you have any questions regarding to our content. <laughs> okay, so what, what we, uh, of course, explained uh, uh, is a newly introduced event broker. And most probably you will also raise the question, okay, this is very, very new, but I use already the event mesh. Is, is it possible to use the event mesh instead of the event broker? And the answer is? Yes, so uh, right now there's no immediate uh, call to action. So if you are running and if you are live with subscription billing already, uh, there's no need to change anything. Event broker will be slowly phased uh, in and uh, this will only start um, at the end of the year. So currently event mesh is, is still the way to go. At the end of the year, we will start uh, to also allow the integration via event broker but uh, with no forced migration date. So no need to worry, you can do this step whenever you are ready for it. But it's a very, very nice feature, very nice functionality of the event broker. Just visit all the other sessions. I'm sure there are some about. Um, it's very helpful. All right, then we have uh, another question. How to migrate data load? Send feeds from S4HANA private to SAP BTP. Event mesh BTP is really required. Yes, it is required because, of course, we, uh, we, we need the uh, events. The events trigger uh, the asynchronous integration. So this is ex exactly used for. And we have data events. So we really call the APIs for, for this one. The only workaround would be to, to use an integration flow, but uh, this is definitely the nicer way of working from architecture perspective because it's 100% it's asynchronous and it works uh, in, a, in a similar word, uh, mode as a subscription building is doing it. Yeah, but um, you can also uh, see when, when we showed the presentation that the event flow was always from BTP to um, uh, S4HANA Cloud, so um, S4HANA Cloud is the receiving side of this for this business process especially. Um, of course, uh, there's, there's other ways to connect. Uh, we do have also um, the yeah, iFlow-based integration, but uh, for this specific integration, um, event-based is, is the technology of choice and it's mandatory as well. And maybe once, uh, maybe there was more than one question in this one there. You talk about S4HANA Private. Um, the, the demo was, of course, for S4HANA public cloud because this is a 100% cloud scenario. In private, uh, you would use it uh, with event mesh. It's exactly the answer. Yeah. All right. Then we have a second question. May I know how much of this is relevant for HANA on-premise? That's what you also this questioned. So um, for S4HANA um, private cloud, uh, we 
do have the same uh, integration available. Um, and uh, it also works in a similar way. Um, the integration itself differs, of course, a little bit. Um, you have to, um, yeah, for the details, you have to look at uh, the, the scope item descriptions and the integration guides. Um, there are slight differences between on-premise and uh, public cloud. It's a leaner way. So just from, from business perspective, you use subscription billing, especially with the private when you only want to focus on subscription. In other way, you, you will consider the prim. Um, but in this way, it is, it is possible, of course. It's still possible. It was always possible, but not with the latest and nicest ready-to-run features, but it's possible. Um, then, oh, I have to be... Uh, but in case of high, heavy volumes, data transmission, can event program mesh be used? Yes, so um, it depends on what you mean with high volumes. So with the volumes we typically see and uh, what, what our customers are using, it's, it's no problem. If you have extremely high volumes, which is uh, millions of events uh, every day, um, then um, it makes sense to consult us first if it's feasible or not. In principle, we, d we don't have an, an upper limit defined. Uh, it really depends on uh, the individual use case. But um, usually event broker is not the limiting factor when we look at integration and um, integration volumes. All right, okay. With thank this you. One? Yeah. Many thanks. It was a pleasure. Enjoy the ticket. Thank you also from my side. Bye. Have a nice event.